So as you can see, we've just joined the game. I've got a loop running and you can see text popping up there and text popping down there. We've got a base tutorial map here. If you go into the launcher and you create a new map, it will create what you see here. And what we're gonna learn in this tutorial is the basics of scripting. So what a function is and what variables are and how you can print something on the screen and what a loop is and also a couple other things. So let's get right into it. I thought I'd just show you the first thing that you should be doing when you are working with script files, which is you're gonna to wanna to download Sublime and you can get that for free on the internet. So I'm gonna put a download link in the description. Once you've installed it, go into Sublime and go to preferences, browse packages, and it's gonna open up here. If you don't have this folder already called TypeScript, create it, and then you're gonna to wanna to paste in the files here but we need to get these files. So if you go to your Black Ops 3 root, which will be your Steam library, Steam apps, common Black Ops 3 root, and then we need to go to the doc mod tools and we need to grab the GSC Sublime. If you just copy it, and then we're gonna go back to this location, which is in your user app data roaming Sublime text packages, TypeScript, and paste it here, and then just do extract all. I've already done this, so it's gonna come up with the same thing. There we go. You see it's put a folder there, that's no good. Let's cut that and paste it here, although they're all the same, so I'm not gonna do any changes. And once they're in here, then close down Sublime, open it back up again, and you'll notice that when you're typing now, as long as you've saved the file as a GSC, and it says GSC down here in the bottom right corner, you can actually pick it here, GSC, it's going to make everything look pretty. This is called syntax highlighting, and it's an easier way of visually seeing what's going on as a color code for different elements of the script. And the other thing it has is IntelliSense, which is it's gonna try and predict what you're doing so that it can help you write things faster so if we create a function and we want to do for example print line and we know that it has the word print in it you'll see here that it gives you a list of things I'm using the arrow keys right now to scroll through them of things you can use so I want to use I print line there we go it gives us these different options and you can press enter and it's gonna fill it out for you so when you don't quite remember something that's a way to remember or if you don't know that a function exists but you want to try it out then that's another thing you can do is use that IntelliSense anyway let's get back to this tutorial okay so if you're here and this is the launcher so just open up black ops mod tools and if you haven't worked with black ops mod tools then go down in the description and you'll know how to download it there the first thing you might notice is i'm running the dark theme you can go to options and use the tray art theme to get it looking like this once you've created a map go down to where it is and right click and go to open map folder this will bring up the map folder you want to go to scripts zm and open up your map names gsc you got a csc and you got a gsc the gsc is where you'll be doing most of the scripting and there are occasions where you need to change the csc but for the moment we'll only be working with gsc okay so let's move this across here we go, this is our script, and it might look quite confusing at the moment, but don't worry, we'll get there, and it will soon make sense to you guys. Okay, so the first thing I would like to explain is a function, and why do we use functions? So right here, we have these, which are called script tags, or curly braces, brackets. They've got loads of names. Basically, they're code tags for executing code. You'll see here, you'll have this function main, and this is where everything gets actioned from. So if you want to add in your own code, you're more than likely going to be going to the bottom of the main function and including it here. But first of all, let's speak about what a function is, the fundamentals of what a function is. So say that you write some code, I'm gonna go down here and we're gonna, this is just paraphrasing, this is pseudo code, this isn't actual code. But just say that we want the game to, we want it to print out saying this apple is green. However, if we have more than one apple, and I will just change it to I print line. So that's the technically the correct one. But you'd want to put this inside of a function. But anyway, this is just the fundamentals. Let's let's just do this. Okay, say that we want to add our own custom code in. So let's go just do that now. We're gonna to need to thread a new function and I'll explain what this is in a minute. But let's just go down here and we're gonna make a new function called custom and we're gonna put in that code that we just made there. We want it to 
print out saying this apple is green. However, if we also want it to print out like I like this green apple as well. I like this green apple. The best way of doing things is copy and paste them around as well if it already exists. If you want it to say green apples are the best we could do that and it would work and when you get in game it will post that on the screen you won't see it because it will post it on the screen before the game's loaded so that's why i've got a flag here but i'll explain that later so this is why we create functions if you want to have it say the same thing for a whole load of apples say we want it to say the same thing about a red apple and we want it to say the same thing about i don't know a yellow apple <laughs> You can see how we're having to repeat so much here and it's not a good use of writing if you're going to have to redo everything. So there are a few ways you can do this. You could loop or what I'm going to show you is the main reason for having functions is for passing parameters. Before we go any further, I'm going to tell you what a variable is. So in computing, well, there's loads of types of data. You've got to think about the best way to store it and how it's going to be working with other things in the code. So we have integers, we have strings, we have objects, and, and basically it's a smarter way of organizing everything. So let's just say that we, we don't know how many different colored apples we're going to want in the game but we know that we don't want to have to write it out every time so what we can do is we can write this so that it's a function that will take a color and then it will write out the color here so let's do that okay what we're gonna do is we're gonna say that we give color and sorry to americans out there who spell color differently i'm just gonna spell it like that and then we'll take the word green and we'll add in two double quotes like that and then we're gonna add in two pluses and we're going to add in the give color. So what we're saying in this line now is it's going to print that out and then it's going to take whatever you pass it and we'll give it a color and it's going to put the full stop on the end. And so we want to just replace the colors with that variable and it can start with it on the front like that. So yeah, a variable can store anything really and you can access it later on. If we go up here, we want it to take a color and print out all these things. So we're gonna give it a color and that basically means we can write in one here. So if we just type in green like that and we're gonna do the same thing for a whole load of other ones. We're gonna do red, we're gonna do yellow and let's do a blue apple as well. Okay, so just before we check this out, I'm just gonna use this level flag so that it waits for the game to load first before it prints it on the screen. And we can save that. I don't need to show the credits anymore. That's another thing that you, would be good to know is commenting. So if you don't want something to run in script, you can do two different types of comments. There's a single line comment and there's a multi-line comment. A single line comment is when you put two forward slashes and then you start typing here and basically it's not going to execute it it's not going to use it as code it's going to go oh okay uh, i see he's written a comment there let's ignore that and it's going to jump straight past it but say you want to ignore this entire script it'd be a bit tedious to go through the whole thing and do slash 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 but you could do that there's nothing wrong with it it's just would take a long time you can do a multi-line comment instead which is one forward slash and then an asterisk symbol and then you want to tell it where it finishes which is the other way around asterisk then forward slash and that means that the next part of it will get executed as code but it's going to ignore the whole section that you've defined between the asterisks so that's just how you do comments and comments help you think about how your code's working so i might say here talk about apples now when they see this function and they see custom give color, they won't know what it's talking about, but you are saying, oh, this is a function that talks about apples, yeah? So when they see that, they'll know exactly what this is. And you can go even further. So above things that are happening, you can say, wait until the game has loaded. So people, when they see this, they'll see level flag, wait till initial black screen pass. If they haven't seen that before, they're gonna be like, what is that? I don't even understand. Yeah, but when you're writing comments to help yourself understand how it works and others when you're sharing the code, they're going to see this and say, wait until the game is loaded. And then they'll see this and they'll think, oh, okay. So that's why that's there. Print statements. 
This is exactly why you write comments usually is to explain what's going on. But the other reason is to test things. So you might not necessarily want this line anymore. And instead of deleting it, you could just delete it and get on with everything and it'd be fine. But say you're unsure on whether that's breaking the program or you're not sure whether you want to keep or use it later, you can just turn it into a comment. And then later on, if you decide to use it, you can uncomment it and bring it back to life. So it's up to you on whether you want to use something or not. It's good to keep things in the code and only really delete them if you're 100% sure you don't want it anymore. Okay, so I'm going to save this and we're going to go check it out. Make sure that whenever you're editing the code, you have the link option selected because the link option is the part that will be putting your scripts together. So it's the important part. Compile is more for anything that's made in Radiant or any assets that need to be loaded in. If you're having problems and errors when you're trying to get it to run, there's just a few little checks that I would recommend. One is to make sure that whenever you're creating a function that for every bracket you make, there is an ending bracket. And if you have more than one ending bracket, an extra one, that's going to cause a problem as well. So what you're going to want to do is just make sure that they all have their own pairs. If we actually go and look at this a bit further, so you'll see here that we just clicked to the right of this one and it's got a line under it. And then at the bottom, this one's got a line under it. That means they're a pair. And if you click on the little arrow, it will actually hide everything between them. And when you can see the line, it's a visual way of showing that there's a pair. And if you click on the next one, you'll see the same thing happens here and you can close that as well. And just make sure that every opening bracket has an end bracket and you don't have extra ones because extra ones will cause a problem. Okay, well, the, the game's loaded now, so let's go in and check this out. And you'll hear the custom round music that I've left on there. If you just look in the bottom left corner, you'll see what we've added. So, there we go. It all came in one go because there was no wait or any loop or anything going on. But there you go. You saw all the different statements written about apples. So how can you use this? There's so many reasons you want to be writing stuff to the screen like that. One is for player feedback. If someone's done something in the game, you want them to know, oh, this has happened or this has happened. And you can do that using print lines. Or if you've activated the music, you might want it to say music activated or even just to give them a description so in this case we're going to be doing it just to put some credits on the screen when the game loads so we can remove the thread custom that we have there and bring back the thread credit remember that the main function is the one function that the game uses to run and if you're going to be adding anything custom you want to just reference the function that you're creating down here so I made this thread credit and then we have open close bracket bracket and then a semicolon and that's the correct format for threading a function okay so then when you've got the function you want thanks for the sub man so when you've got the function here you want to first give it a name and it can start with anything uh, but I don't think it can start with a number so we can call it anything or as long as it's not something that already exists it should be fine and then you want to do open and close and it's a bit different to how you thread it now you want to press enter and do open script tag and then you can write stuff in here this one doesn't have a semicolon although every line in between script tags will have to end with a semicolon in this example that we're making you'll do thread credit and then down here we'll make a function called function credit open bracket close bracket and then open script bracket and we're going to say level flag colon colon wait underscore till open bracket and then in quotes initial underscore black screen underscore past end bracket and then semicolon what that's doing is Treyarch have created what's called a flag the flag is basically putting a marker somewhere saying okay well this is the microphone and here's a pen yeah we don't want the code to run until it's underneath the knife and a flag let's just say the knife is a flag and the pen is the code that's running and you got some code down here aka a phone and you don't want it to run until the flag's been triggered however there'll be other stuff running so while the game's loading you don't want it to run when this gets underneath the flag 
and it will flag, it will hit this because, okay, well, the black screen's passed now. It's going to go, okay, we'll run the code then. And then the phone's going to be answered. Or in this case, it's going to be the rest of the script. So if you put in a flag here for initial black screen pass, it's not going to do anything after that until this flag has been reached which is great because that's exactly what we need right here we don't want anything to happen until the game's loaded so what we're going to do is we're going to just write a comment in here and say wait until the game has fully loaded that's how i would describe it in here we've got a couple functions the first one is i print ln i print line and yes this is a function this is a function that is a core function which means that somewhere else in the code it says function i print ln and then in here it's like do this and do this blah, blah 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 and basically it tells the game exactly how to put text in the middle or on the side but that's done automatically we don't have to worry about it we just want to use that function so here we go we write the function and then it takes in a parameter in this case we just put whatever you want between some quotes so i'm gonna say okay well uh this is a test you might want to be super generic and common and say hello world as every single thing on the planet for coding says so we'll do that and then you also want it to say so th actually let's do this properly let's get rid of that and we're gonna do a just a simple credits so it's waiting until the screen's black screen's gone past and it's loaded and then we want it to run. Then this example will take out the while loop because we only want it to show the credits once. So we're gonna do credit to the map maker. And this is where we're gonna put I print line bold. That will put the little message in the middle of the screen. In this case, we're gonna get it to do whatever you want, which is gonna be, okay, well, write your name instead of my name. But we're gonna say this map was created by your name here, Ice Grenade Enjoy. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is save that compile it and we're gonna go check it out so while this is compiling we will just run through a couple things there are lots of things in programming and we'll get through them steady this is just the basics i just wanted to explain to you guys what a function is and why we even have functions without functions you know you could you could just put a whole ton of stuff in the main function and not even use functions but functions allow you to break down the code in a way that stops you repeating stuff so much and it's an organized more efficient way of doing things anyway the game's loaded up so let's check this out and you'll see the message pop up with the credits that we've just added and remember just link if you're going to be doing anything with the scripting you don't need to mess around with anything else okay so black screen's gone there we go this map was created by ice grenade enjoy so we've just added credits to our map as soon as it logs in and that's a nice little touch to have makes people realize who made it and the game's running no problem so that's been the introduction i hope this wasn't too complicated and let me know how this was let me know if i need to be a bit more technical let me know if i need to dumb it down let me know if i need to include more don't worry i'm going to be bringing out more of these tutorials if people are like this sort of stuff about more features of scripting exactly how things work and we'll be covering some basic things that you can add into your map later on after maybe about 10 tutorials or so we'll get a bit more advanced and we'll get a bit nitty gritty and get in there and start making some cool stuff just let me know if you do have any questions on any of this down below in the comments and i'll see what i can do to get back to you and resolve any problems you're having other than that thanks for watching this has been ice grenade and yeah have a great day and i'll see you on the next one. Oh, wait just before you go subscribe hit that button hit the little bell icon if you haven't already thank you if you already have you're awesome and yeah see you next time bye